What's wrong with the Leafs is a question that has been asked too often for too long. A Leaf fan is invariably a Leaf critic as well, a teller of Leaf jokes. Brian McFarlane went inside Maple Leaf Garden for this week's Inside Hockey Report. Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, often called the mecca of hockey, the most famous hockey building in the history of the world. Great teams, great players, memorable Stanley Cup moments, they've all been featured across the street. The Gardens has meant so much to so many millions of us growing up in hockey. Through the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and on into the 60s, but the kids today don't seem to be aware of that tradition, that mystique which seems to be crumbling. After all, there hasn't been any Stanley Cup fever in Toronto in almost 20 years, and it hurts. The year was 1967. Canada celebrated its 100th anniversary. A Man for All Seasons won the Oscar as best movie of the year. Gold was a mere $35 an ounce. Dr. Christian Barnard performed the first successful heart transplant. Muhammad Ali was sentenced to five years in jail for refusing to join the U.S. Army. And the Leafs won the Stanley Cup in 67, beating the Montreal Canadiens. It was the Leafs' last cup triumph and the final cup win before NHL expansion. The Leafs haven't come close to the cup since then. Well, I feel very sad because we're seeing the erosion of a, of a meaningful, a worthwhile Toronto and Canadian institution. We've seen it fall to a lowly estate uh, of, of which all Torontonians can, in a sense, be ashamed, Brian. And it makes me sad to see that happen. No one agonizes over the Leaf plight more than Dan Maloney, a decent, hard-working man whose job is on the line. He's the guy who has to face the critics. If you look at any sport, there's always a distinct correlation between the team that's on the ice and the people who are working off the ice. If you don't scout well, and if you don't draft well, and if you don't make good trades, you can't put together a good team. And, and if the laziness is off the ice, there's going to be laziness on the ice. Uh, there are two big trades this year were, were for people, Fergus and Maxwell, who had been had told their other teams they were not going to play there. They were easy acquisitions. They didn't draft well. They, they listen to central scouting. They don't scout. And, and they just do not do the things that you need to do. They don't work 24 hours a day like other general managers, other scouts, other coaches. Well, it's been going on now for about 15 years, and waiting for the Leafs to win at this point in time is like leaving on the porch light for Jimmy Hoffa. I guess with the pandas going back to China, the city really does need a strong zoo attraction, and uh, this is an admirable fill-in, but it's the same as it's been for a long time, the longest-running horror show in sports, and uh, here we go again. I think that uh, Ballard's main problem is loyalty to old retainers. If you look around, uh, you'll find that he relies almost solely on people who have been in the organization, and that doesn't always work. Well, the problem is congenital incompetence at every level. The ones I feel sorry for are the players. They're like that uh, tuna, you know, the canned tuna that was rancid. It's not the fish's fault. It's the guy that put the fish inside the tin. In this case, you go right to Big Ballard. It's his baby. Only he can fix it. It must hurt you inside to see what's what's happening. Well, it is. It's, uh, it's devastating because uh, I know I have a good club. I know I have a good manager and a good coach. And if we get things uh, gelling, I'm going to make some of these guys eat crow, believe me. Off the ice this week, more confusion and more to write about. As John Brophy replaced head coach Claire Alexander in St. Catharines, and Alexander, after mulling it over, checked in as Maloney's assistant. Also this week, Rick Vive blasted his teammates for some sloppy habits in the Leaf dressing room. A couple guys throw jerseys down on the ground. If, if you know, if we're eight and two, you know, it's a, it's a joke. Everybody laughs it off, and guys just go and pick it up. But uh, when you're one and ten, and that happens, and uh, the captain speaks out, uh, you know, Rick lost his temper, and some other guys lost their tempers, and a, and a, and a big argument comes of it. But it's. Uh, uh, that just shows you how a small little thing that's really insignificant uh, can be blown up to a big thing when uh, the pressures uh, mount up like they have. I guess the most frustrating thing is, is you know, just seeing things going on that that uh, you feel aren't right. Uh, just uh, things that go on off the ice that that I think carry on when you go onto the ice. And uh, uh, if you don't, uh, if you're lazy off the ice and and uh, 
and not mature, then that's going to carry on to the rink. And uh, you just don't need that because we need all the help we can get right now. At a leaf luncheon, the pride of Mellonville helped dispel some of the gloom with this bit of advice to the Leafs. Well, don't get overconfident. <laughs> uh huh. Really? We, we, the Mexicans started out 1 and 11 uh, one year, and uh, things were going great, and then it just, you know, we got a little cocky, and it went yeah. right down the tube. Yeah, yeah. So don't get cocky and just, you know, don't ride on it. Uh -huh. Go for it. It's yeah. a long season. For the Leafs, after only a month of play, it already seems like a long, depressing season. And don't their faces...